welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. We are continuing our HFES 2018 coverage. My name is Nick Rome. I'm joined by Blake Arnsdorf. And today we have Amanda Klinger here, who is the Director of Operations at the Educator School Safety Network. Amanda, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. So you were just part of the school safety panel. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of questions and some things that we want to clear up. But before we get there, I want to know sort of what your expertise is in sure. and sort of your career path. Sure. Up to this point. So I'm the director of operations for the Educator School Safety Network. Uh, we're a national nonprofit organization, and we are sort of where the rubber meets the road um, when it comes to school safety. We primarily provide training um, for K-12 school districts, and we also do a little bit of research, and we do sort of, sort of technical expertise and, and resources and consulting for schools. But we're really sort of taking a holistic approach to school safety and sort of working against that uh, myth that school safety just equals active shooter response. Um, there's so many other things that we're concerned about in our schools. And so that's kind of the work that we do as an organization is in empowering educators uh, to do that work every day. So just a little bit of like, how did you get all the way a director of operations? Because that sure. sounds like such a prestigious right. title. I'd love uh, to know like your <laughs> career path up there. Well, it probably sounds more prestigious than it is. So uh, I'm actually an attorney by training. Um, I like to joke around that I'm a retired attorney. I don't practice law anymore. I do this work full time. Uh, I'm director of operations because our, our co-founder is my mom. Uh, Dr. Amy Klinger. So she has 30 years of experience in public education uh, as a teacher and as a principal and sort of started this organization um, because there was really a, a vacuum as far as school safety from an educational perspective. Um, school safety really primarily for the last 20, 30 years has been a sort of a security or a law enforcement thing. So former security, former military, former military, former law enforcement professionals saying, I can come in, I can make your school safe. Um, and we really saw that there was this need for something beyond that type of expertise. Um, military or law enforcement expertise can be helpful, but if I have a kid who goes down in the cafeteria from anaphylactic shock and we don't know where the EpiPen is, that's not really a law enforcement issue. Uh, that's right. a, an educational issue. And so we really saw the need to be able to empower educators to, to do some of this work and to be able to tackle some of these challenges because uh, our educators are the first first responders in so many of uh, school safety events. Yeah, you bring up a good point. So one thing that I really want to kind of talk about is is this misconception that school safety is equal to school shootings yeah. and you just brought up the incident with a with a student needing an EpiPen and mm -hmm. you know educators not knowing where to find that yeah there are many other facets of school safety could you go over sort of what types of school safety there is yeah yeah I, I see this problem I think is really pervasive so I'm at, I'm at a cocktail party and I'm not really talking about my work and I say oh I I run a nonprofit doing school safety people think oh shooters guns well okay that's that's part of it and then Oh, you mean bullying? Yeah, that's part of it too. But school safety, if, we are, if we're really looking broadly defined, it's anything that overwhelms the normal resources of a school. So two kids arguing with each other is not a school safety issue. That's a normal operation of a school issue. But if I have uh, you know, something where we have an accident and someone breaks their leg, that's a school safety issue. Um, we have accidents, natural hazards, violence. There's so many other types of issues and risks, something happening outside of the school, something that generates inside the school, something that escalates. Um, and we really need to sort of really broaden that definition. And I think, unfortunately, there's this, you know, the natural, the, the media consciousness of this is school safety is active shooters. And that's because we have these horrible, horrific tragedies in our uh, American, at least sort of in our cultural legacy of school shootings. Um, and those things are tragic. But it's tragic if a kid gets hit by a bus because we don't have adequate supervision at this missile. And that's a school safety issue, too. And so we're really working with educators. You know, educators are making thousands of decisions every day. And so what we're really focused on primarily is how can we provide those folks with some basic school safety knowledge of what am I trying to accomplish from a school safety standpoint that can inform those decisions. And so it doesn't need to be about living in fear of an active shooter. It's what are the skills and the dispositions and the abilities that I need to have. Sure. I'm, so I'm curious, how, is, is there any part of your organization that focuses on sort of this outreach to uh, not only inform the educators about all the different various risks involved in mm -hmm. school safety, but also the general public, are there any initiatives to kind of address the general 
opinion? Yeah, so I mean, um, part of it, you have to keep in mind, we're a very small organization. And so we're really sort of only able to do the things that we're sort of funded and directed by our board to do. But I, I would say all of the media and sort of outward facing um, things that I do are a reporter asking me a question about a school shooting and me sort of answering that question and saying, and also, let's talk about all of the other school safety issues and concerns that we have. Um, and so I think just sort of constantly beating that drum of it's not just school shootings, it's not just school shootings. And, you know, I, I, I know our teachers and I know that our, our students and our parents are very concerned, and especially with a, a year like last year where we had Parkland and we had a couple of other high-profile shootings, that's looming very large in people's minds. But, but we have to sort of look at it not from, well, what are we need to be scared of, but what can we be prepared to do? Um, and I think this is a messaging failure sometimes of schools to say, you know, we're, we're doing active shooter response. Well, if we, if we don't really say why, people can sort of infer, well, it's because our schools are awful, horrible, dangerous places. We need to be concerned about active shooters as opposed to we want your kids to have skills. I need your kids to be able to respond appropriately to different types of crisis events. And so that messaging distinction, I think, can really help people. We're learning skills. We need kids to learn skills. Um, we need them to learn academic skills. We need them to learn life skills. I mean, we teach social-emotional learning in our schools. Safety skills are a part of that. And I think maybe being able to fold that a little bit more holistically into the work that educators do, I think, will we'll also go a long way. And I'm not sure this is something you can specifically speak to, but what does that kind of look like for students, like actually trying to get some of these skills? I mean, the training initiatives that you guys put sure. together, what does that really feel like for them? Sure. So so we really actually focus on training for educators. Okay. Um, and we originally sort of did a fair bit of training for students as well, and we found that teachers are already doing so much skill building in their students that if we were able to teach teachers what are they trying to accomplish from a safety standpoint, teachers were able to train students way better than we could. So like an example of this is we're talking about, and I think I talked about this in the panel, of if I need students to be able to rapidly evacuate a room, it doesn't help me to say, boys and girls, when a, when a maniac with a weapon comes here, what would we do? No, it's, folks, what would we do if we needed to leave this room in a hurry and no one could left, get left behind and no one could get trampled? That's a skill. It's not an active shooter response. That's a skill. So I might need to use that skill if the building is collapsing. I might need to use that skill if there was some sort of a violent event. Um, but educators are able to, to do those things, and we see things like lightning commands. So when I do a lightning command to third graders, we're not going to have a long discussion about what it is. We're going to do the thing. And so I practice a lightning command with taking out your science books. Lightning command, science books, and we don't gripe, and we don't grumble, and we don't have a conversation about it. We just bring out our science books. And so you take that skill, and then we say a lightning command of everybody get up against the wall. That's a lightning command. And so we, we see skills like that, and we see looking, looking at it through that lens of skill building and capacity building instead of how would we respond to crisis, crisis, scary things. And it, it you know, diminishes um, fear. It diminishes anxiety. And educators already know how to build skills in students. They don't have the expertise of what am I trying to accomplish from a safety standpoint. And so that's really where we really focus our work. I think that's an excellent way to go about <clears throat> trying to like get this information out there for students and educators to yeah. try and be able to react because versus like what do you do in situation X, you've already mm -hmm. got skills you're using all over the place yeah. right. and then you just apply those in the specific situation you run into. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, can you dig into the training piece a little sure. bit more for educators? What does that look like? What is the curriculum? If there is a curriculum, is it sure. personalized? Yeah, so we're sort of unique in that we don't have like a set curriculum. You know, this is what we do. Um, we do sort of end up doing a lot of the same things. You know, students are students, people are people. Um, but we really work with school districts to sort of identify what are their highest areas of need um, and then work from there. What we do end up doing a lot of is sort of basic training for all school staff. Um, there's a, a lot of power in everybody hearing a consistent message. Um, the consistent message isn't, what should you do if this happens? It's, what are we trying to accomplish here, and what do we know to be true? Um, unfortunately, in this space, there's a lot of sort of anecdotal, well, this happened one time, and like sort of swapping of war stories. And I, I understand human uh, propensity towards narrative, but you know we are also academics. And so we try to focus a lot on, you know, what do we know to be true from past events and what do we know to be true 
from school violence and how can that inform what we're doing moving forward. And then we really frame a lot of it around decision making um, because we know that educators are making so many decisions and we're really trying to integrate safety as part of a daily operating procedure. Um, unfortunately, it's really been segmented that, you know, safety is something that we're concerned about on this day when we have this professional development. And, you know, on Tuesdays, we're concerned about safety, but the rest of the time, I don't really have to think about it. Um, and that comes from, like you said earlier, the misnomer of school safety just being about active shooter response. And so we're really trying to integrate safety considerations into everything that folks are doing. And I think an example of this is we were working in a school where they had a fire drill procedure that was like 14 steps, which is absurd. Um, but one of the steps was if the fire drill happens between classes, you should report to your next period class check in and then evacuate the building. So clearly this was a procedure that was designed only for drills, not for an actual fire. And it was designed for the convenience of adults because I do want to be able to account for students um, as opposed to what's the most important thing that I need you to do here, get out of the fire. And then I need to have a system for accounting for students. And so getting people to think differently about what do I need to accomplish from a most basic standpoint, from my, my safety outcomes, and then running a school, accounting for kids, all of these other things. So do you go into the classroom and talk to the educators or is it like a, a classroom of educators that you then talk to and try to educate them about these, the, the very targeted uh, sort of problems that you've identified at the institution? Or? Sure. So, I mean, we do vulnerability assessments and needs assessments, sort of looking at schools and looking at their systems with a fresh set of eyes. And that's certainly part of it. But um, primarily, we really focus on professional development for educators. And so we're looking at, you know, looking at large groups of folks. Um, we do specific training, you know, we do training about threat assessment and management, um, or parent unification planning, we do some more targeted trainings that are typically more like workshops and in smaller groups. Um, but but mostly what we're doing is a lot of this sort of giving people the basics of like what am I trying to accomplish not just active shooter response and getting people to think differently about those things and how they can play a role in violence prevention and climate and culture and sort of not so not just target hardening um, but you know preparedness in everything that they're doing every day and how they can fold that into their actual job responsibility you know the reason they became a teacher so to, I guess to actually answer your question, we do a little bit of all of it. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we really kind of meet folks where they are and, and where their needs are. Yeah. Blake? How do you identify, like, do, do schools come to you or seek you guys out? Or are you, like, actively kind of identifying different schools to go to and try this program out? Like, how does that part of the business work? Yeah, so that part, I mean, from the business side, it is people coming to us. Um, yeah. You know, we're a nonprofit organization. And, and, you know, part of the some of the bigger systemic issues that we see in school safety is, you know, you have the federal level and you have some guidance for, at the federal level for some recommendations and some best practices. But education is very very closely married to the idea of local control. And so you have a wide, wide variance in what school districts are doing. Um, and that can be powerful and it can be helpful and it can be impactful. I think unfortunately in the realm of school safety, it has become, we have a fragmented response. Um, and you also have the notion that, that educators are sort of abdicating this work to law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement expertise can be really helpful, but this isn't something that a teacher can turn to a cop and go, hey, solve this for me. Because, you know, the example of a kid in anaphylactic shock, a cop's not going to solve that. And I think it's unfair to put law enforcement in that position. And I think, you know, after Parkland, we saw a lot of saying, okay, we'll just add an SRO, school resource officer. Adding a cop to a situation is not going to solve. It's not a magical solution for all of these various you know, types of problems. So uh, we see that fragmentation really being a, as being a problem. And you know, we're trying to work a lot at state level of providing some of the guidance on some of these things. But you know, as an organization, I don't come in and say to a school, you should do X, Y, and Z. We come into a school and say, here's what we know works. Here's what we know is based in evidence. Here's what we know best practices. Here's things that folks have had a lot of success with. And then people need to make it their own. Um, you know, you can't just have a plan that you buy from someone else and put it on the shelf and, and call it a day. You know, people need to, to live this stuff. And so it really is about shifting the way people think about this and shifting the way people approach, uh, approach their jobs every day. Right. Well, I know we're running short on time, but if our listeners want to go find 
uh, your organization, sure. um, where can they go for some additional resources? Yeah, probably the best is to head to our website, which is just um, www.eschoolsafety.org. Um, we have tons of resources. We have free resources. We have resources that are paid. Um, it is really sort of specifically geared towards educators. Um, I know from a human factors standpoint, I think the I am not a human factors professional, so I, I can't imagine. Could have fooled us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine uh, what a, how I would be butchering the principles of human factors, but I think the idea of we're trying to educate kids here and how can we integrate school safety practices without changing the fundamental character of, of our institution. Um, and unfortunately, I think we haven't done a great job of that so far. So far, we've sort of said, well, this works in policing, try it in schools, or this works in securing an NFL event, put it in schools, as opposed to, I have to educate kids here and I cannot sacrifice that. So what are the incremental safety interventions that I can do that make our schools safer, but that don't alter the fundamental characters of, of our schools. So um, I would love to uh, be more involved with Human Factors folks being able to, to help us do that, because I don't think that in school safety we've done a great job so far with that. Absolutely. Well, that was the whole point of the panel. And Amanda, thank you so much for stopping by today. Um, we really appreciate your time Absolutely. to sit down and talk with us Human Factors people. Uh, in the field of human factors, just like it depends on the school mm -hmm. uh, and, and what they need. We say it depends for the human. So yep. we like to sign off the show with it depends. So on the count of three, <laughs> I will count us down. We'll all say it depends. Ready? Three, two, one. It, it depends. depends. <laughs>